uh, as you just mentioned, is my big comeback to to my new home, to my company, Impact Wrestling, and um, and I just I can't wait. I can't wait to see how the how the fans are gonna react, how my opponents are gonna react, because the 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 big dog is back, and uh, and I'm I'm coming back to take what is mine, and uh, and I'm gonna make a lot of people pay. Uh, as I always say, you have to win the titles in the ring after hearing the one, two, three from the referee, not just um, um, not just getting those titles as a present or handed to you. So I'm, I'm I'm back for what is mine. So clearly, based off of that statement, you're looking at championship gold. Oh, that, definitely. I have been doing that since the beginning of my career. Everybody knows that I'm a I'm a title collector. Everywhere I go, I I, I go for the gold. And I always get it. So <clears throat> um, I, I became the first uh, undisputed champion in Impact Wrestling. I lost it on the table, never in the ring, and uh, and I'm going to get it back. All right. Well, before we open up for some questions, let me ask you, I'm, I'm sure you've been up to Ottawa, your thoughts of uh, the city. Uh, have you had a time to go around? And technically, you're actually in Quebec right now. Uh, so your thoughts of uh, coming up here to uh, Canada? Uh, it's a beautiful city. Uh, of course, after landing here in Canada, the first thing I did was going to Boston Pizza because I love that place. I love the wings. I took my good compadre, Matt Calaccio, to to have his first um, Boston Pizza experience. He loved it. And then uh, because he was kind of late, we decided to just come to the hotel, go to the gym, and, 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 came back, and, and, and come back to the hotel to rest and get ready for, for this media day. But uh, but I think today we're going to have the time to, to go around and see a little bit of the city. And, yes, uh, I know we are in Quebec right now because we were trying to watch TV last night and everything was in French. <laughs> so I got to ask, I look around your, your sweet, presidential suite here. I do not see any Boston pizza. But I'm also going to ask, you come to uh, Canada, how is you not going to Tim Hortons? I'm not a big fan of Tim Hortons. I'm sorry for everyone now that are loving Tim Hortons, my place. And every time I come to Canada, I go to Boston Pizza every day. I love those wings. <laughs> and uh, you know, I don't have any any leftovers from last night because I kill them in the restaurant. <laughs> All right. Well, we will open up for some questions for Alberto. And as I've asked in the past, if you would uh, identify yourself, identify your media outlet, and if we could. Uh, Keep the questions going forward, and uh, it's uh, it's a bright, positive outlook for Alberto, and uh, we will get some questions from the media. Q and A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Hi, Alberto. This is Raj Geary. Hey, Rose. How are you, buddy? Hi, hi, Alberto. This is Raj Geary with Wrestling Inc. I just wanted to get your thoughts on Eli Drake winning your title and some of the comments he made about you uh, after your suspension. Oh uh, well, um, to be honest, I don't know anything about what uh, Eli said after my suspension, which everybody knows it was a wrongful suspension. Um, I don't, I don't really know, but um, whatever Eli said, he he's gonna have to back it up in the ring, and um, and he had the opportunity to be in the ring with me once. I took him to school, I taught him a lesson, and I think he had an amazing match uh, for the first time in his life. But it was because he was in the ring with Alberto Patron. So whatever he said in uh, in the ring after my suspension, I don't really care. Because as you know, I don't, I, I just, if I ever open my mouth, I always back it up in the ring or in the street or anywhere I have to back it up. Um, I'm going to have the opportunity to, to be in the ring with him pretty soon. Um, the difference between him and I, I earned that title. I wrestled, I fought for that title against one of the best performers, wrestlers, fighters in the world, Bobby Lashley. And I won that title after hearing the one, two, three from the referees. He got it. He got it handed. He, he was a present. He was a an early Christmas present for Eli Drake. He's not a real champion. Real champions um, get their titles, get get their victories in the battle. <coughs> uh, 
Hey, Alberto. This is Kyle Stevens from Still Real to Us. Uh, longtime fan of your work. I'm curious because Impact has seen a lot of new faces come to the roster. For you, what are some potential dream matches or opponents you'd like to face in the near future and why? Well, definitely the first one, and, uh, and I want that to happen as soon as possible. You see, like Drake, I want to kick his ass. I want to I wanna erase that smile from his face because I don't even know why he's so happy when he got uh, that title just handed to him uh, as, an, as an early Christmas present. He will be the first one because I want to get what is mine. I earned that title. I fought, I, I battled for that title against one of the best fighters, wrestlers in the business or in the planet, Bobby Lashley. And that's how you earn the goal, fighting for it, winning it in the ring after hearing the one, two, three from the referee. Then um, I would love to have a, a match between between Hijo del Fantasma and Alberto El Patron here in Impact Wrestling. I've had the opportunity to wrestle him. He's part of the the AAA, the, the the Mexican company AAA roster. But he's amazing. He, um, he's doing. He's been doing great things in the past uh, five five eight years, and it will be something really interesting for the fans to see. And uh, I would love to have a rematch with. Uh, after I kick Eli's uh, Drake Trasero, I want to have a rematch against uh, Bobby Lashley. Awesome, man. Hey, uh, you, uh, Alberto, let me throw that to you. You, you bring up Fantasma, obviously, uh, Bound for Glory. You got the uh, uh, six man match with Fantasma, Tejano, Pagano against uh, representing Team AAA against Team Impact, James Storm, Eddie Edwards, and uh, who's there? Who's the third one? Uh, uh, EC3. EC3, of course. Uh, your thoughts about that? And it, it's probably a little uh, interesting for you, seeing you know. Perhaps the AAA guys, as, as well as you know, the Impact guys. Uh, yes, I didn't even know about uh, anything about that match, but uh, it sounds like it's going to be fantastic. Uh, it's going to be amazing. I mean, there's nothing but talent in, in, in that match. I know they're going to give us an amazing one. Uh, to be honest, I, um, I represent Impact Wrestling. That's, that's, that's where my heart, and my heart is, and that's my new home. Um, I work for AAA. I think for, for like 10, 11 months, but I was just down there for business. Um, I never felt that place like, like my home, like I do with, um, with Impact Wrestling. So I'm going to be supporting my, my home team, Impact, but, um, but I, I, I also want the Mexican wrestlers to do well because they deserve to be in a place where they're really going to give them what they deserve and they're going to give them the recognition, recognition that they deserve. Hi, this is this is Tony calling from the UK for a Steel Chair magazine. How are you? I'm good, man. And you? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. But it's a bit it's a bit wet here, but other than that, I'm all good. I'm all good. Um, thanks for your time, and um, I really appreciate it. I just wanted to um, ask a question. Obviously, following your suspension, um, it's very easy to you know criticise you, and there was a lot of people jumping on your back. Was there anyone from from the Impact Impact locker room that was particularly you know? supportive and helpful and who who were the guys sort of reaching out to you for support who was supporting me who was, a, who was supporting me in impact yeah. wrestling everyone everyone was supporting me in impact wrestling i mean the company did what what they have to do after that awful incident um uh, they, they needed to because they had the pressure from networks and from the network and sponsors but uh but they also did what they had to do or the right thing after they got the evidence and results from the police department, the district attorney that uh, showed the world that I was uh, in that situation, I was a victim in a, in, a, in a stupid incident that media media and fans decided to make or make a big thing or blow it out of proportion because it was nothing, absolutely nothing. It was just me and my fiance having a bad day arguing and like any other couple out there, any other couple around the world, uh, yeah, we we, we, we we argue sometimes, and some arguments are yep. are worse than the others, and that's exactly what it was. Um, I I can I, I, I can bet I, I bet a million dollars that that couples out there when they have arguments, sometimes they say things that they don't really feel or they are not even real. They just they just say it because it is the heat of the moment. That's exactly what it was. 
So my company, Impact Wrestling, at the beginning, they did what they needed to do uh, for the business, and I agreed. And it was actually my idea. It was me telling them, hey, I think the best thing to do is for me to give you the title and, uh, and not be the Impact Wrestling champion anymore because, because, um, because at the moment, until we don't get the evidence and we don't tell the world and show the world that I didn't do absolutely anything, uh, it looks bad. And I want to set an example. I want to preach with the example. I was always the one saying, um, when I was in the other company, I was the one always saying, why rules apply for some wrestlers and not for the others? Uh, why, the, why the main guys, they can get away with everything, and the other ones, they get punished. And I don't want to be that guy in Impact Wrestling. So even though I'm Alberto El Patron and I'm uh, one of the main stars in the company, or at the moment I was a champion, I said, I want the rules to apply for everyone, including me. So here's the title. I will get it back in the ring the way you're supposed to do it uh, when the time is right. Oh, well, so it's Adam from the Impact Lounge. Uh, good afternoon, I'm guessing, to you. Uh, good evening for me. Hey, what's up, buddy? How are you? Really good, really good. Uh, I, I was there at uh, Slammiversary uh, when uh, you were uh, riding high, and it was uh, great to see the fan reactions around you at that time. My question is, is more to do with you coming back uh, tomorrow. Uh, is there anything that you can reveal about where on the card you're likely to, to be targeting? I know you mentioned Eli Drake already, or is it all more a surprise for us all at this point? Uh, well, there's not going to be surprises. I'm coming back, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab that microphone like I always do. Not cursing this time, I promise. <laughs> 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 I promise the company, my grandma, my dad, and uh, <laughs> everyone else, that no more cursing. <laughs> um, I'm gonna grab that microphone and I and I'm gonna say what is in my in my mind, what is in my heart, the way I feel, the way I feel about uh, what happened before and what's going on right now, and uh, and of course I'm gonna demand a, uh, um, an opportunity for my title because it's my title. I, I'm gonna continue saying it. You have to become champion in the ring after hearing the one, two, three from the referee. When you get a title just because somebody handed that title to you without without defeating the, the, the real champion, without defeating the big dog, you are just a paper champion. Um, I'm going after him, and then whatever the company wants me to, whoever the company wants me to face, I'm, I'm more than welcome to do it. As you know, El Patron never say no to a good fight, and uh, I'm here in, in Ottawa, I'm here in Canada, and I'm ready to fight. Hey, Alberto. It's Kyle Stevens again from Still Real with us. Um, thank you for just sharing your personal insights about your own journey. I think it's uh, very enlightening, and we all respect just how you handle your business. Um, I'm a big family guy, and I know you have a long history with your father, uh, especially this summer. Um, you know, you were in the ring with him. Uh, can you maybe share with fans some memories that stand out with your dad in the business over the years? Oh my God, there's so many. Like my, my dad has been my, my best friend or he, he is my best friend. He, 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 he's my best friend, my mentor. The reason why I'm in this uh, beautiful business, he's the one who keeps me sane, keeps me grounded <clears throat> in the moments where I feel like, um, like, um, I, I'm not feeling too sure about what um what the business is doing with me or where the business is taking me. My dad is always there to, to guide me and, and help me take the best decision in my life, in my career. Um, just to mention one, uh, I can tell you the last one in, uh, in Orlando with Impact Wrestling when I became the, 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 the undisputed champion. Um, it was fantastic to have my dad with me in the ring, to, to share that moment with my dad, to be able to go down on my knees and, and, and present those, uh, those titles to my dad that was a real moment. There was no pro wrestling entertaining. There was nothing scripted over there. It was just the love from uh, from me to my father and, 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 a, and a, a proud dad looking at his son accomplishing uh, the, 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 the biggest thing in his business. <laughs> uh, 
Hi, Alberto. This is Raj Geary with Wrestling Inc. again. Um, What's up, buddy? Just want, uh, how are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> uh, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on just the changes behind the scenes uh, in Impact Wrestling since you were last there, uh, specifically with Jeff Jarrett no longer being in charge of creative. Uh, well, I mean, it's too bad that we don't have a, a, a good person, a good friend like Jeff Jarrett. He was uh, someone that was uh, supported me in the company since the beginning, he was writing amazing things for me. That amazing story between my family and LAX, which is one of the stories that I, the storylines that I enjoyed the most in the, in my career since I came to to North America. Um, he, he was he was the one also with John and of course many other people in the company. They came up with that fantastic idea. Um, uh, it's too bad that we don't have them again, but of course the business, the company has to move on, go on, and uh, and now we're here in Canada with uh, with uh, with other people in charge, but with the same with, with the same energy, with the same great ideas, and I know w with with um, with all the the new faces in the company, the Mexican wrestlers, the established wrestlers from Impact, and with El Patron Alberto coming back to Impact. We're gonna be doing amazing things, and we're gonna we're gonna be taking this company to the place where it deserves to be. Uh, hello, Alberto Akilesha from India. How are you doing, sir? What's going on, man? All good, sir. All good. Uh, so, Alberto, now uh, this is a question that I wanted to ask you because of whatever happened uh, previously. Um, how important do you think it is for the superstars or for the wrestlers? Uh, to have the time off to heal their bodies uh, and as an extension to that do you think the fans need to kind of know their boundaries now more than ever uh, well it's really important for a wrestler to to rest his body his mind of course when you're young I'm, I can tell you this when I was in my 20s I didn't want to stop <laughs> when you're in your 20s nothing everything is perfect nothing hurts your body is completely fine and you can wrestle five times in one day and the next day you get up and you're like nothing but when you get to my age you wrestle once and the, the, the next day you don't even want to move <laughs> um and uh i i had that that's one of the reasons why i i decided to not work in uh in this other company because i couldn't handle the the schedule they have a brutal schedule in that other place where you have to do 230 240 appearances per year which which is fine because uh, when you sign with that company, you know that's exactly how it's going to be. But you have to be there until it's the right time for you. When once you made a name for yourself, and then it's the, the right time for you to go somewhere else, to to be able to control your dates, <coughs> to to have enough time to enjoy your family and rest your body, um, and you do it just like I did. Um, if you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. The way you feel. When, um, when when you're performing in the ring. Hey, uh, this is Brijo from Sportskida in India. Uh, my question uh, is actually a two-part question. Um, so when uh, your personal matters become public and uh, go viral, how big of a strain is it mentally? And uh, the second part is, what exactly have you been up to since uh, your uh, suspension? How have you been getting ready for the ring again? Thank you. Can, can, can you repeat the question? Because uh, the signal was pretty bad and I couldn't understand what you said. Yes, uh, Riju from Sportskida. My question is, uh, when personal matters become public, uh, how much of a strain is it mentally as a performer? Uh, well, uh, I mean, the world we live today, um, there's nothing you can do. Your life is going to be out there and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be public for people to see it. Um, I'm old school. I'll, I'll, I'll never be happy with, uh, with situations like that. I will never be happy with, uh, people just exposing their life and people expecting for you to tell them exactly what you do and when you do it, even when you go to the toilet. And uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, unfortunately for me, and I'm saying this just for me, um, 
it was really hard for me to accept that now I have now everything we do or I do is public knowledge. Um, well, uh, my 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 answer for that would be um, um, that day it was just someone deciding to to invade our privacy. A woman decided to invite a, a, our privacy, and uh, and nothing really happened. It was just a, a a day where where a man and a woman were having a rough day. They had an argument, and uh, as as many or 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 as all the couples out there, um, some arguments are worse than the others. But that doesn't mean that um, that there's no love or there's a, or there's anything bad going on. We we are completely fine. We were completely fine, and uh, that's that's just what it was. The media, the public decided to make a big thing out of it when it was nothing. Um, the suspension, well, now everybody knows that it was a wrongful suspension because I didn't do absolutely anything. Yes, of course, we had people um, talking about uh, our business just because they were trying to protect one side. And I, or or also because they wanted to have five minutes of attention because <laughs> because that's the way it is. But uh, but that that that's what it was. It was the wrongful suspension. Then everybody saw it with the police report, with the district attorney, the the state attorney determined and telling the world, leave Alberto alone. He was the victim in this situation, victim in a situation in a in a in a in an incident that where there was nothing. Because they they just put me that title, but nothing really happened in a, that night. But a couple having an argument. Hey, Mr. Patron, this is James from the Wrestling Epicenter. Pleasure to speak with you today. Hi, right, man. How are you? All right, I'm doing great. <laughs> um, my question for you is: When you were suspended, you still did a few interviews, and I really was impressed with the fact that even though your status was suspended, you still referred to Impact as your home. What makes Impact home, other than the fact that they sign your checks? What makes Impact feel like home to you? Uh well, because um, this is something that people need to understand. Impact Wrestling did what it has to do after the incident, because even though. They knew I didn't do absolutely nothing, nothing that I was um, the, the, the victim in this situation. And I hate using the word victim because it sounds really bad. But, but, but the point is I didn't do absolutely anything. But they needed to do something because they know me. Uh, some, of the people, they, some of the people in charge of the company, they know me and they knew there was nothing going on. But, of course, the network. The sponsors, they don't know me. They don't know what's going on. They don't know what's behind the scenes. So they needed to do that to to bring peace to the network and sponsors. And then after after I came, uh, my lawyers came with the came out with the evidence and showed them that that it was exactly like I was saying that I didn't do absolutely anything. Everything went back to normal. They 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 restarted they they they, they restarted paying me and then uh, raised, re reinstated me in the company. Um, what makes it home? It, because um, home is a place where you feel safe, where you feel happy, and this is a company where else uh, where where I feel safe and I feel happy. I know you you you're thinking, okay, how how you how can you feel safe when they're suspending you? Again, this was something that we decided together. The suspension, we decided it together. Me handing the title to the company and, and applying those rules to me the same way they would do it to any other talent in the company was my idea. We worked together on this uh, for the best interest of the company and the business because no matter, no matter what, innocent uh, victim or whatever, it looks bad out there. And at the moment, I was the one carrying the company on my shoulders. I was the champion, and we needed, we, we did what we needed to do for the best interest of the company, and especially for the progress and business. Hi, Alberto. It's Adam from the Impact Lounge again. Um, obviously, since you're last in the company, there's been a, a lot of change in the creative vision of the company. You know, there's wrestling from lots of shows around the world, all those kind of things. Uh, you were featured quite heavily before uh, the suspension. 
now that you're back and uh, Impact's got, uh, I suppose, almost like a, a fresh set of tapings coming up, what do you think they can do to really start moving the ratings up and the need on getting more exposure? What, what do you think is the next step for the company? Well, number one, Alberto is back. <laughs> People are going to start watching again. <laughs> um, well, we have an amazing team of uh, of wrestlers working together in Impact Wrestling to make this this company what what this company deserves to be to make this company relevant again. And I know with the help of all those wrestlers, the new talent from Mexico. El Patron back in Impact Wrestling. We're going to put amazing shows every single night. We're going to have amazing TV tapings in the next few days. And uh, people, they're going to turn around and they're going to turn their TVs on again to watch Impact Wrestling every week. And I promise you this. And you'll see it. In the moment In the moment I, <coughs> they, they announce that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Alberto is going to be there, he's going to be facing Bobby, or Eli Drake or any of the wrestlers in the roster, they're going to turn on the TV just to watch it. And, um, and just like I did before, I'm going to give them everything I have. Everybody, everyone was talking about how happy I looked, how, how fresh, how different I looked when I was working um, for Impact Wrestling before the suspension. I'm the same guy. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I feel like a, like a rookie. I feel like a young guy coming into this company again uh, because I, I, I have something to prove. Why, why do I have to prove that that title belongs to me, that this is my company, and that I'm going to die in that ring to make this company big again? You may now ask your question. Hello, Alberto. Ryan Bowman from thegorillaposition.com. <clears throat> Uh, you mentioned, What's up, brother? How you doing, sir? You mentioned uh, Eli Drake several times, but his opponent in that match is pretty talented, too. There's a chance you might be going after Jim, Johnny Impact for the, the gold. What do you think about facing him, and um, what does he bring all Johnny around? Who? Johnny Impact. John, Johnny who? Who's Johnny Impact? Oh, John Morris. Oh, is he Johnny Impact now? <laughs> That's the man of many names. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to disrespect Johnny. He's a, he's a great guy and a good friend of the business. I just I didn't know his, um, his Johnny. In fact, because with all fairness, and everybody knows this, when I go home, I go home to be a father, to take care of my kids, and uh, to be involved in all the sports, the schools, activities, and uh, just to be a father. So I don't watch wrestling when I go home. Yes, I... I I talk to the important people in the company to see what's going on and where am I going and where the company is going. But I don't watch wrestling, um, so I didn't even know that. So yes, of course. I mean, uh, I know Eli Drake is still the champion, right? I don't know if, if Johnny Mundo Impact uh, is going to be the next champion um, after tomorrow. Are they are they wrestling tomorrow? Yeah. So. And but if he, if he is, well, then, then Johnny, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to kick your trofeo. <laughs> Muted. <laughs> Hello there. Yeah, it's Francis Reyes from In Ring Pop. Um, my question is um, to you. Uh, thank you, Alberto. Um, at the moment, we do wrestling. Is there anything that you're thinking about maybe taking on America's top team at the moment and maybe, like, taking, like, at the moment, Bobby Lashley's um, like beat him up in MMA fights, probably. Oh, baby, MMA fighting? No, no, I'm not. I'm not planning on fighting ever again inside the cage. I'm the president mm -hmm. of a company, so I make the rules. <laughs> I make the matches. I hire the fighters. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I know Bob. Bobby is really fantastic with his company, but if he's not, if he, if he, if, if, if someday. He feels like he wants to try a different organization. Of course, we will have a, an opening for him in, uh, in Combat Americas. Um, uh, no, um, to be honest, I tried it a long time ago. That's actually how I started my, um, my business relationship, friendship with my fantastic, great friend and boss, Campbell McLaren. He wanted me to fight for the organization. I tried it. I went back to the gym, but after... Uh, I don't know, two, three weeks in the gym, getting up at five in the five in the morning, 
uh, getting punched in the head, punching people in the head. I decided that I was not hungry anymore for MMA, that I, that I didn't have the, the, the eye of the tiger like in the Rocky movie after so many years in pro wrestling and doing well, making money and making um, a name for myself. So no, it's going to be super or pretty much impossible for people to see me fighting in an MMA match in the cage in the near future. And if I do, let's say I've decided to do it, I will do it for my company, in my company, uh, Combat Americas. Hi, Alberto. It's uh, <laughs> Daniel from Real Sport. What's up, um, Just a quick question. Thanks for your time, by the way. Um, who do you think are your biggest obstacles towards you reaching your goals in Impact? Well, uh, to be honest, uh, I have no obstacles. I have reached my goals already in Impact. I became the the first ever in on the student champion, um, and I think now is just to to go back tomorrow, kick some trasero, show the people why I've been collecting titles my entire career, get um, get back to that ring and uh, and recover what is mine, which is that title, because I never lost it in the ring. <clears throat> um, and, 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 and that's it. Continue working hard to to make people feel hooked or, or to people to get hooked and feel interested in the product. And that's it, I mean. Hello, Alberto. Uh, David Dunn here with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer. Uh, just wanting to ask you a question about Impact Wrestling's relationship with AAA and Mexico in general. Um, obviously, there's the AAA team versus Team Impact at Bound for Glory, and uh, Impact Wrestling had some representatives at Triple Mania earlier this year. Um, what's your take on the working relationship between the two companies, and what do you think uh, having a strong presence in Mexico will do for Impact Wrestling? Uh, well, number one, um, having presence in Mexico is going to help us a lot because we're going to get more more fans that are going to fall in love with uh, the Impact Wrestling product. We also have the opportunity to get some sponsors to, from Mexico, especially with El Patron being in Impact Wrestling. I'm 100% I'm sure that a lot of companies are going to turn their heads and see what, we, what, what we've been doing here in Impact Wrestling. Um, um, for us in Impact, it's, it's going to be fantastic or it's fantastic to have all the talent from those Mexican wrestlers because, as you know, all those lutadors are, are amazing and they have a lot of stuff to bring uh, to the Impact Wrestling table. <coughs> and at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure all the fans are going to be the ones winning the most in a uh, in, uh, working relationship between Impact Wrestling and AAA. Hey, this is Christian Bruns from Power Wrestling Magazine in Germany. How are you today, sir? I'm good, I'm even you. Not too bad. So we're very much looking forward to Bound for Glory airing live Monday morning at 2 a.m. in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland on runfighting.de. And speaking of Austria, you just did a tour of Austria a couple of weeks back with your friend Chris the Bambi Killer. First, can you talk about the experience wrestling in Austria and places like Vienna, which has a huge wrestling tradition, and uh, Rey Mysterio was on that tour as well. Do you think there is a chance that we will see Rey compete in Impact as there are have been so many rumors surrounding him in recent weeks. Oh, well, it was fantastic to be in Austria um, just a few weeks back or a few months back with my, my great friend. My great friend, one of my best friends in life in the business, the Bambi Killer. We had a blast, not just with Bambi, but with Ray, with Apollo, with Alofa, with, with Chicano, with all my great friends uh, working for, for Bambi. In uh, in Austria, and um, 
and, and, and it's always a pleasure for me to go there because of the, the German, the Austrian fans, they know a lot about wrestling. They respect wrestlers. Um, every time we're there, they, 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 they go to the arenas. They pack those arenas, and they, they just go there to have fun. And about my good friend, Ray Mysterio Jr., well, to be honest, everyone can have Ray. It's just a matter of having money to have Ray. So, uh, to be honest, I don't know what the situation is with the Ray and Impact Wrestling. I'm pretty sure they have been in, in, in touch. I'm sure they had conversations in the past, but if Ray is not here, it's uh, the, 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 the reason is pure and simple, a money matter. Because I know Ray is open to do business with uh, with everyone. He was doing business with Lucha Underground. Uh, something happened over there, and uh, and they ended up breaking their their business relationship. So he's free. So if Impact wants to have Ray, all they gotta do is pay him. Fair enough. So maybe Alberto versus Ray at some point down the line would be something fans would look forward to. Oh, of course, Every, everyone wants to see uh, Alberto Patron against Rey Mysterio. But actually, uh, one of the favorite matches for the indie scene, um, I remember doing that match at least 80 times last year all over Europe and, uh, and around the world because they, they, the, the promoters know that if you, if you put that match in the card, uh, number one, you're going to have a, a complete, so that arena, and number two, you're going to have an amazing, a hell of a match. Hello, uh, this is Riju from uh, Sports Kida again. My question, hello? Yes, yes, I'm here. I'm hello. Here. Uh, Hey man, uh, this is uh, so. My question is: uh, So you were working as a baby face in your uh, in your latest run. Do you think you are a better performer as a baby face or as a heel? And do you see a heel run coming soon? Uh, well, if you ask me, I I rather be a heel. I'm a bad guy in and out, inside and outside the ring. <laughs> uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a trasero kicker. I'm a I'm a, I'm a a person that gives respect but demands respect and um, I love working as a heel the heel is the one controlling the match controlling the emotions the heel is the one telling his opponent and the audience what to do if the, the, the bad guy wants them to cry they will cry if he wants them to 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 laugh they will laugh um, uh, so that's that's the place where I would love to be. But but at the end of the day, we work for our audience. We work for those fans. And the reason I was working as a babyface is because that's the that's the side where the fans wanted to see me. Uh, I remember myself in the locker room in the locker room telling friends, "Oh my God, I don't really like working as a babyface, but this is what the fans want. So if you give me the option, I will be a heel tomorrow." But uh, I don't. I don't get to decide that. It's the the, the fans. Is is my audience? Is Impact Wrestling audience the ones that decide where Alberto Patron is going to be? Hello again. It's Francis from In Ring Pop. Um, my question is um, Alberto. So, um, what is it? Um, what do you want to see yourself in next year's Bound for Glory? Do you still want to be the Impact Champion, or um, do you want to do something more like going to administration role? Uh, well, uh, everybody knows I'm not going to be doing this for, for too long. My plans are to end this year, wrestle the next one, and then s start doing my my, my tour in 2019. I love the pro wrestling business. I have, been, I have been in love with this business since I remember, since I was a little baby. But, but I've been doing it for so many years that... Sometimes I feel tired from all the travel. I, I, I feel tired for I feel I feel tired of being in hotels, car rides, uh, having breakfast, lunch, dinner by myself. Like just just to tell you something, the, um, these past um, shows or lately, I've been bringing my my family or friends with me because, because sometimes he get um, he gets um, um, it's not so fun to be on the road. 
to be in the ring is a different situation. Every time I'm in the ring, I have a blast. In those 25, 30 minutes when I'm in the ring, that's the best time of the world. That's the best time of my life for me. But, uh, <laughs> but, but, but yeah, I'm not going to be um, wrestling for, for too many years. But, uh, but after, after, once I decide to not be a wrestler anymore, of course, I would love to stay in impact and, and, uh, and help the new talent to, to accomplish their dreams, help the company with the storylines and with everything else. Hey, Alberto, it's Kyle Stevens with Still Rila Us one more time. Uh, this is actually a follow-up question to kind of what you were saying. I know earlier you talked about your dad being a friend and a mentor uh, because of your years in the business and all the experience that you have. If there is one person in the Impact locker room that you could kind of shape and mold and maybe give some advice along the way, who would that be and who do you see a lot of potential in and why? Well, there's there's a lot of talent in that locker room with the with the with the young guys, with and the, the new wrestlers in the in the company. But um, but um, before becoming a champion in Orlando, <clears throat> in the last pay per view, I was um, I was talking a lot with um, with this kid with Santana, uh, who is part of the 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 LAX team. He's a he's a he's a young guy. He's a good-looking guy. He has a lot of talent. Of course, he needs more experience, and he needs people like like Bobby, like uh, like my like 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 Storm, like myself, um, passing him the knowledge that we have when it comes to to working in main events or just working in the in, in the ring in general. But uh, but that's a that's a guy that I know. That if he stays um, healthy and the company do what they're supposed to do with them and with the help of of established superstars like 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 Storm, like Bobby, like myself, and uh, many others, this kid can uh, can do great things for him. Hey, Alberto, it's Akilesha again from the Ringside View India. Um, so a lot of pro wrestlers, including you, have kind of talked about how the fans should know their boundaries once they're outside the ring because pro wrestlers now are so approachable. Do you think that's an issue? Do you think the fans should kind of know their role and their boundaries once they're outside the, the confines of the ring? Can, can, can you repeat that again? I'm so sorry. It's just signal is pretty bad. Can you repeat it again? Sure. Uh, so a lot of pro wrestlers, a lot of wrestlers, including you, have talked about how the fans should kind of know their roles once uh, wrestlers are outside the ring. Do you think that's an issue? Do you think the fans should know their roles uh, after you know the, the uh, lights and the cameras turn off and when the wrestlers are outside the ring? Do you think the fans should know their roles and kind of know their boundaries? Well, it's just a matter of respect. You know, it's not knowing. The, it's not about knowing the rules or not knowing the rules. Is I think that this this is just about respect, the uh, the, the the education, the the way you were brought up uh, when you were growing up in your in your house with your family. Um, I, I just I just said it before. I I'm, I'm someone that gives respect all the time. I will respect you till the end of my days. Just don't, don't don't disrespect me. That it's 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 pure and simple. If every action has a reaction, and um, some fans they need to understand that this is entertaining. This is sports entertainment. If I'm playing the bad guy in the ring, or one of my co-workers is playing the bad guy in the ring, it's only a bad guy in that way. It's not it's not real. It's not a it's not an it's not an a hole in real life. It's like when I was working as a heel in the other company. I mean, I don't I don't have a hundred billion a uh, a hundred billions like uh, like um, uh, Alberto del Rio is supposedly to have. I don't have two hundred and fifty cars. I'm not an ego in real life. I'm 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 Alberto Rodriguez, and once the lights are off, once I'm out of that arena, I'm just like any other person. And uh, and and of course, fans they need to understand that. Uh, that, uh, that we're just playing a role for TV or for, 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 pro, for the pro wrestling business. 
If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. Hi, Alberto. This is Rod Geary with WrestlingInc.com again. Uh, What's up? This week, this week you had spoken to TMZ about Paige, and I just wanted to get a um, – with her recent neck surgery, or I guess that was last year, I just wanted to see uh, how she was feeling and how her training is going for her return. Well, she, she's doing really fantastic. She's, she's super – she's training every single day. She's, um, she's, she looks strong. She looks super healthy. She has been cleared by uh, the, uh, her personal doctors and also by the doctors of the company. So um, she, she's looking fantastic. I mean, I don't know if you have seen, seen uh, her pictures lately, but she looks in an amazing shape, and she's like she's going to be ready for whenever the company wants her to go back and kick some trasero. Hello there, yeah, it's Francis Reyes again from In Ring Pop. Um, my question is, have you had a chance, Alberto, to try the new Impact um, pizza? And also, if you haven't, um, what kind of um, Impact pizza would you have with a Mexican twist? Oh, okay. uh, oh of course. Of course. I mean, I haven't, I haven't tried it, but I will. <laughs> uh, I know, I know I, uh, um, I've said, I, I said that, um, that when I'm in Canada, I only go to Boston Pizza, but but I'm I'm gonna make an exception and just try um try the, <laughs> the Impact Pizza just to see if it's any good. Well, just just a, a little follow up. The Impact Pizza, and uh, I know everyone hasn't even tried this, but uh, he's actually gonna be at Crossing Crate here in Ottawa this afternoon from three to four, doing a public autograph signing, and uh, I'm trying to convince him it might be off his diet a little bit. Uh, to have a piece of the Impact Pizza. It's got uh, pulled pork and a bunch of other uh, ingredients in it, so uh, I think we can kind of convince them. Alberto, would you would you give the Impact Pizza a try? <laughs> hey, Alberto, Achilles here from the Rings Every once again. Uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on uh, the global uh, wrestling uh, network that Impact Wrestling has recently launched. Did you have the chance to go through the content? What What do you think about the uh, network itself? Well, well um, to be honest, I haven't been able to to see it and watch what um, what the Impact uh, Network has to has to offer. As I mentioned before. And, and, and believe me, I'm not saying this because everybody knows how much I love the pro wrestling business. That I will, I will die to defend my business, the law of my life, the pro wrestling business. But uh, when I go home, I, I don't watch wrestling. When I go home, I just, <laughs> I, I, I go, I go there to be a father. When I'm in, uh, when I'm in planes or in car rides, I read. I read because sometimes when you're in this business, you. You forget to to cultivate your brain. <laughs> you just use your brain to 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 hit someone or to get hit by someone. So so <laughs> you know, I haven't had the opportunity, but but to all of the fans out there, just if you have the opportunity, do it, get it, because you will have the chance to to <clears throat> to watch all those amazing matches from the past and the and and the present ones. I told that Bernard we keep it at right at about an hour, so we, we have time for just a couple more questions here. Come on, boss, you're killing all the fun. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you very much for being there. Right. Uh, hi, uh, Riju from Sportskira again. Uh, my question is, uh, so Alberto, you were on track to be part of uh, the Olympic Games in 2000. Uh, it never came to fruition. Is there any sense of disappointment over it? And how different would your career have been if you had participated in the Olympics back then? Uh, well, of course I feel bad because um, I wrestled for so many years. I accomplished so many things in my amateur career. I was the best Mexican wrestler, the best me Mexican amateur wrestling wrestler at the time. And, uh, and of course, the main goal when you are an amateur wrestler or an amateur athlete is to ever to 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 go to the Olympics one day, to the to the Olympic Games one day. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it for for the reasons that many people know. 
the government decided not to support the wrestling team that year. Uh, and of course, uh, I was really sad and upset at the time, but, uh, but luckily for me, my dream was and, and was always to be a pro wrestler. So the next day, after, even though I was really sad and disappointed because I knew I was not going to go to the Olympics, I decided to become a pro wrestler. And um, two weeks after that, I was in the ring. I was in a ring in Japan with my dad uh, making my pro wrestling debut. So, and then from there, well, the rest is history. So I think uh, that uh, even though I wasn't able to go to the Olympic Games, the life or the pro, pro wrestling career has been amazing with me because I had the opportunity to travel the world, to work for the most important companies in the world, and, to, and, and, and the most important thing, I had the opportunity to become champion in every single one of those uh, companies that I work for. Hi, Alberto. Uh, thanks for taking the time again to speak with us. Uh, <laughs> no, this is course, man. Thank, you, thank you all for, for, for doing this with me. Um, it's always important. Uh, the, 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 the performers and the media, they have to go hand to hand in order to, to, promote the, to, to promote the event and to have people knowing about uh, this beautiful business, the pro wrestling business. Great. Well, thank you. well this is Raj uh, Giri with WrestlingInc.com again. I just wanted to get your thoughts on Impact uh, moving to Canada for this next set of tapings and for Bound for Glory and uh, seemingly doing more tapings in the future in Canada as opposed to Orlando. Oh, me is fantastic. To me, I, I, to be honest, when I when I joined uh, Impact Wrestling, I never I, I never understood why we were just doing it in Orlando. We need to go to other places. We need to give the opportunity to other people to see uh, what Impact Wrestling has to offer. So to, to me, it's fantastic that then we're not doing uh, the the tapings this time in, uh, in Orlando, and we are here in in Canada. In this beautiful country, of course, the weather sucks because it's too cold out there. <laughs> but but the, the the country is beautiful. I had the opportunity to perform in Canada so many times in the past, and I know how passionate and how crazy the fans get when uh, when they get good pro wrestling. And I'm a hundred percent sure that that's exactly how it's going to be in the next days. I hope the next time we get the opportunity to put tapings in Mexico and, and then go to India. Well, we already did that in India. Just like we did in India, we're doing it in Canada. Then one day we'll do it in Mexico and many other places because I think everyone deserves to have a piece of this amazing company. You may now ask your question. Hey, Ryan Bowman from the com. Um, you hear a lot of athletes say that no matter what they're going through in their personal life, whether it's injury or a loss, um, competition is their comfort zone. How much for you with all the, the stuff that swirls around, how much is being in the ring just kind of an escape for you from all the other crap? Oh, for me, it's everything. For me, it's absolutely everything. Like, I can, I can be sick or I can be going through a really difficult time in my life. I could have... A, the, the, somebody trying to hurt me or whatever, but when I'm in that ring, I'm the king. I'm in peace. That's a place where I feel happy, where I forget about absolutely everything. Um, I remember one of my mentors, one of the best wrestlers in the history, the great, the amazing, the awesome Dean Malenko, telling me this one time because um, I was working for, for that other company and he saw that um, he could see that there was something going on that I wasn't happy. And, uh, and I remember him coming to me in, uh, in Gorilla. And he said, Alberto, uh, I know, I know. And don't worry, I understand. Uh, but don't forget about this. You're about to go out there. And out there, out there in that ring, you're the king. You're the boss. Nobody. For 20, 30 minutes, nobody can tell you what to do because you control destiny, you control life, you control the actions, the reactions. Of course, once, <laughs> once you hear the one, two, three, you have to go back to reality. <laughs> but, uh, 
but that's my kingdom, being in that ring. For someone like me who was born in this business, I, I, I promise you, there's no one out there, or probably there, 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 there is, but but they, they, they probably love this business as much as I do. I defend this business with all my heart, with all my passion, with everything I have. I will die for the, uh, in order to defend this business. And uh, being in that ring is, is like paradise to me. Well, Bruno, I appreciate it. That's going to wrap up this week's media teleconference. Tomorrow, Bound for Glory, right at the Aberdeen Pavilion here in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Alberto, what's the final thought for you heading into the uh, biggest pay per view in the company's? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, first of all, uh, thank you all for 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 doing this with me. Thank you all for supporting the company, for supporting the business, and uh, just get ready because we're gonna have a uh, bound for glory uh, here in Canada, and, and then the TV tapings, and it's going to be a spectacular. We, me and uh, all the other wrestlers in the company are going to give you more than 100%, and get ready because El Pinche Patron is back! All righty, well, Alberto is back. He's uh, signing autographs today for anybody in Ottawa, 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock, uh, Crust and Crate, the Lansdowne location, and uh, tomorrow, Bound for Glory, sold out. And Alberto El Patron is back. Thanks for everybody for calling in again this week.